Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I talk about all things tech and finance, and in this video, I'm going to be going over a variety of sampling methods. Let's say that we have 1,000 observations, and each of these observations are related to credit card invoice data. Each of these observations has an outcome of a 0 or a 1, a 0 being that particular observation is non-fraudulent, and 1 that particular observation being fraudulent. And then all we're trying to do is trying to predict whether that particular observation is fraudulent or non-fraudulent. It seems easy, right? We just apply a logistic regression and hopefully we have a great accuracy score. However, that approach actually assumes that that particular data set is really quite balanced, meaning we have 500 observations that are fraudulent and 500 observations that are not fraudulent or something around that ballpark. But what happens if our data set is really imbalanced? such that we have 10 observations that are fraudulent and 990 observations that are non-fraudulent. If we just apply a logistic regression on this, our immediate prediction would be 99%, right? We'll write out the gate that each of the observations are non-fraudulent. And if our model actually performs less than this, let's say like a 95% accuracy, it means our model is actually really bad, even if that particular statistic seems really good. This is where our variety of sampling methods comes into play when we are trying to address our imbalanced data set issue. Random oversampling is a method that involves randomly selecting from the minority class and simply duplicating each observation. Note that you will be decreasing the variance of the data set. This can result in overfitting models, and this is a relatively naive approach to sampling your data, but it is relatively easy to communicate to a client. The synthetic minority oversampling technique, commonly known as SMOTE, is a technique that generates a new observation that exists on a line between observations. There are three common extensions of SMOTE that I won't go over in this video, but they are on this screen and perhaps they might even be a good use case for whichever work you might be doing. Like random oversampling, the random undersampling method involves sampling from the overrepresented class and retrieving the same number of observations as seen in the minority class. This could potentially remove key characteristics of your data set. This can be seen as another naive approach to your data, but again, it is relatively easy to communicate to others. The near-miss algorithm utilizes k-nearest neighbors to sample points from the majority class that makes this class distinguishable from other classes. Again, there are a variety of near-miss algorithms that can be utilized as shown here. The near-miss 1 algorithm is what I will be demonstrating on how to do. The Tomek links algorithm, a method that is a very popular undersampling approach, takes two observations of different classes and whose distance is shortest using a form of k-nearest neighbors. This algorithm then deletes the majority class observation and retains the minority class observation. So, although this algorithm might not balance the classes, you can improve your model results by removing outliers or misclassified observations in the KNN algorithm. Well, that was a broad overview as to what type of methods are out there and what they are. So let's see how we can actually apply these particular methods in R. Okay, so before you begin, make sure that you install these three packages, Themis, DMWR, and Carrots. Carrots for the confusion matrix, and DMWR is for smotes, and Themis is for additional algorithms that might not uh, exist in these other packages that we have going on here. So set my working directory and I did some data cleaning, converted to a factor. This is what I will be predicting. Let's view that data. Uh, I have 233,154 observations and nine uh, features. And this is what we will be predicting. Uh, a particular observation uh, potentially being fraudulent or non-fraudulent. And this data set is actually quite in balance. So if we were to take a look at the loan default and table, we have 182,543 observations that are non-fraudulent and 50,000 observations that are fraudulent. And so let's go ahead and run a really quick logistic regression and see what the results might entail. So of all machine learning type algorithms, you want to get 8% and do an 80-20 split, get my trained indices, get my training and testing sets where I have uh, 18 
186,523 observations for my train and 46,000 for my test. Let's take a look at the imbalance that's going on here. So for my training, I will have 40,000 or so observations related to fraudulent observations and 146,000 that are not fraudulent. And we don't really care about the testing set because our models not going to be trained on that particular set. And I randomly selected all those observations. So let's run a really quick model in GLM and have my predict function over here when I'm passing in my test and my type is a response over here. So load in the caret library. There's a really neat function with the confusion matrix. Um, make sure that when you are utilizing your uh, prediction and your true value adjustments, uh, make sure that you convert it to as factor. Uh, so over here, I got my predictions. If it's greater than 0 0.5, which is my threshold, um, then convert that to a numeric uh, because this will be turned into a Boolean statement and this will uh, turn it to a 0 or a 1 value. If it's greater than 0 0.5, it will turn to a 1. If it's less than 0 0.5, then it will turn to a 0. So let's run that confusion matrix. And this is our confusion matrix that will appear over here. So. The very first thing that you should probably look at is the accuracy, 77.79%. Uh, even though this looks good, let's actually look at this confusion matrix over here. And as we can see, we misclassified um, 10,343 observations, or this is a false negative. And this is not a very good sign because we only predicted um, for fraudulent observations, even though there exists um, however many observations that we might have right here for tests. There exists 10,347 observations. So we misclassified 10,343 fraudulent transactions, and this is definitely not good. So let's go over the really broad strokes as to what to look out for when we have our output. In general, we want our no information rate here to be substantially lower than our accuracy. If it's you know slightly equal to it or substantially greater than our accuracy value, then we know that something is amiss and our model is not up to par. We can also, in general, retrieve the various statistics related to the, uh, the C matrix that we have actually created over here and we can just get it by class and we can get our variety of statistics over there we even have our f1 score which is really good so uh, over here this is our recall you know which is actually equal to our sensitivity in general we want this to be very high it's just a general statistic that we would get from our confusion matrix uh, and the equation is right here uh, we have a true positive and you divide that but a true positive plus the false negative okay so that's recall similarly we have precision this is also equally important when we are looking at our various statistics and this is relatively quite low but it's our true positive and divide that by a true positive plus the false positive and so probably the most important score to take a look at is our f score or our f1 score this is the combination of the recall and the precision and it takes the harmonic harmonic mean value and we can in general use this f score to compare it with other particular models that have a similar confusion matrix output and so whichever score has the highest one closest to one then in general that is what score or what model that we will want to stick with. Okay, so let's attempt to get better results with our oversampling technique that we have over here. And this method, as I said earlier, is that it just involves the selection of the minority class observations and simply duplicating these observations until we have the same number of observations as our majority class. And our upsample function over here comes from the caret function and we have loaded in all of our independent variables from our train set make sure you take out your dependent variable this is just so happens to be our index of our dependent variable and our dependent variable is our load and default note that when you are running the train up sample the up sample over here from the caret class function it actually renames your loan default so it's actually named class instead of loan default so let's take a look at that table Notice that our observations are now equivalent for fraudulent and non-fraudulent data. We can take a look at our original data set and we see that we have the same number of non-fraudulent data here. So everything checks out. We have the same number of observations that are equivalent 
to the number of observations of our majority class, in this case, non-fraudulent data. So let us actually create a model, just run everything up, get our confusion matrix and see how well this did. And no, it's not very good at all. Let's get the F score. And yeah, F score is not as good as our previous one, 6 point, uh, 0.62. And yeah, our no information rate is substantially higher than our accuracy, which is a no-go. So let's go on to our very next method, which is going to be smote. So for the smote function, you would want to load in the library of DMWR. That's just where the smote function actually lies in. And then since we are still utilizing the train, um, train observations here, we are going to be calling the function loan default tilde all the other observations and in doing so is going to be finding an observation that exists between different classes and so we can potentially find other observations that will that is in between two different class observations on that particular line and do note that this particular smote function is the most basic form of the smote function let us create our logistic regression model and see if our so as we can see our f score is not that bad 0.821 compared to our previous model which was the up sample one uh let's look at the confusion matrix that we have going on here so oh uh, we actually predicted 2500 of these observations correctly as fraudulent uh, but as we can see our other observations not so much so if we compare that to our original confusion matrix we have over here so we run that uh, we notice that our specificity is actually really quite low and if we compare that with the f score smote or the uh confusion matrix of our smotes over here our specificity is a little bit higher so this model actually might be a little bit better when it comes to predicting whether or not a particular observation has fraudulent behavior behind it or whether or not that transaction is fraudulent so let's check out the other method that we have in store and that is downsampling see if it's better than smote so similar to the upsampling techniques the downsampling techniques it involves sampling from the overrepresented class and retrieving the same number of observations as seen in the minority class so pretty much the opposite so doing the exact same thing pretty much we have our x and our y uh, we have a down sample over here let's take a look at the table of our train down sample notice that this is pretty much the exact same function of the up sampling function and everything is noted as class this, this actually falls under the caret library and we notice that we have 40,000 observations that are uh, both within the fraudulent and non-fraudulent observations let's take a look at the train of our original data set and as we can see our minority class uh, number of observations of our minority class resembles that of the down sampled observations that we have over here so let us actually load in or create a model of that and this is our matrix um this yeah it actually does not look that good so this is probably on par with the up sampling method right out of the box and look at the f score yeah 0.62 so it's pretty much representative of the up sampling technique so the the results of down sampling and up sampling are pretty much the exact same thing probably the most popular one that we are, we're going to have is going to be the tomic link function so let's take a look at that so for the tomic link function we are going to be loading in the themis package over here i'm not going to go into the semantics over here but essentially you would have to create a recipe object where our train our train you just pass in our train and we pass in the associated values that are associated with this particular train so one thing that you should definitely note is that when you are working with the uh, with this particular package you need to convert that particular your dependent variable into a class name object so that the recipe uh, object and also the step function that we're going to be using here actually knows what it's actually creating a sample on so let's create that sample object over here oh let me actually name that and then run that over here and this actually returns a tibble and it's pretty, pretty much like a modern day data frame so it's really really cool so let's take a look at the table we notice that when we are working with the tomic library the overall imbalance is actually not you know balance it's still there but as i said earlier this is this this method essentially sort of removed many outlier observations that we potentially had in our data set 
in our in our data set over here train uh, Tomex samples we have 150,000 or so 160,000 and with our original data set we have 186,000 so 20, 20 or so thousand observations are removed so let's actually run this model glm create that confusion matrix and that looks a little, that doesn't look so good uh but let's look at the f score this might be a little bit better than our Oh, this actually might be a little bit better than our given, our original logistic regression model. A specificity is actually really quite low, 0 0.001546. Um, and then let's look at the F score of our original one, original 0.875. So very, very close to each other. And let's look at the confusion matrix our, for our logistic regression. And we see it's 0 0.003866. So this is actually probably worse. Uh, it's actually worse than our Tomex. So last but not least, let's go to our next method. It's going to be the near miss. And this is going to be the near miss one method uh, related to the sampling algorithm. So pretty much the exact same process since the near miss dash one algorithm follows the same package. We create the recipe object. We're still using the same train set and we have already changed the name of that particular train set from loan default to just class so it knows where it's going to be changing its relative you know data entry points and we're going to have a ratio uh, under ratio of one so if we look at the table of our train near miss near miss sample and class it's going to be um it's going to be down sampling to that particular number of observations and then we can take a look at the tibble, really, really neat stuff over here. Let's create the model where we are using the train near miss sample and then create the confusion matrix and let's just calculate the F score 0.62. So this is probably not a very good um, algorithm to use for this particular data set. Uh, so I guess like overall in summary, when we are working with this probably you want to stick with the tomec score since it's actually really really good for that particular sampling method is very very popular throughout industry so definitely highly recommend using that and also when you are using this data set you might want to use like a different model altogether logistic regression can only go so far the random forest or as some type of boosting method like xg boost might be a lot better but overall i hope that you enjoyed this video on sampling make sure you leave a like hit that subscribe button with those notifications on if you have any questions leave down a comment down below i'll try my best to get to you and without further ado i hope to see you in my next video thank you so much for watching